Hi, so welcome to the next lecture. This one is going to be about um, more looking inside files in the Linux system. If you remember from last lecture, we did a lot of uh, copying, moving, deleting, and stuff like that. Um, and we had one command. Let me just bring this up over here. We had one command where we could start to um, create files, but the files would have nothing in them, right? Um, so let me go over here. You can see I've created test. Test has got nothing in it. Okay, so one of the first things we're talking about today is um, beginning to fill these files up with stuff that is important. Okay, so uh, one thing to note actually before we get started with that is about um, the file conventions for naming files in Linux. Um, they are case sensitive. That's number one. So if you um, if you have something like alphabet and um, you start with a small a, then that's going to be one file. And then you can create one with the large a alphabet, and that's going to be a separate file. And uh, they don't exist. And actually, um, we're going to talk more about finding things and searching for things, but uh, the, the case sensitivity can be tricky. Um, the next thing is uh, that we can have files that contain actually a bunch of special characters like for example the asterisk, the hash, and a lot of other things. Um, but it's really really good practice to not use those because you can get things, um, you can confuse yourself quite a bit. Um, as, we talk in, well, as we talk about file expansions next week you're going to see where um, we use some of these characters um, or rather these characters have different uses um, as we move on, okay? Um, Linux file names can contain spaces, but when you use them in the shell, you'll need an escape character. So let me just quickly show you what that looks like. I'm going to move over here and I'm going to do mkdir, which you remember um, means um, basically we're going to create some directories. And I can do something like this. So I've created those. Now what you might expect is to see one directory called this is a test. And when we take a look at it, you see that is not at all what we have done. We have created a directory called a, a directory called is, a directory called test, and a directory called this, right? So that is not what we wanted. Um, sorry, I should be using rmdir for this. So there we go cleaning up after myself. Um, so if you do want to do something like this, we would use quotes and I can do something like this. Now we can take a look and you can see uh, the quotes have sort of changed, but the quotes aren't actually there. Um, they're not part of the um, they're not part of the directory name. So if I wanted to change into this, um, well I could use my tab key and you can see that uh, it's going to complete. And if I needed to type this out conventionally, I would need to escape each of those spaces. So the backward slash um, is, an is, is basically a, a way to escape characters. So we put the slash there, and then we put the space. Um, we put the slash there, and that just indicates, hey, the next, the next character that you see, uh, we don't want to be interpreting normally, we want it to be interpreted explicitly. We're going to talk about all that kind of stuff as we go, um, so don't worry about it too much for now. Just uh, keep in mind that you know spaces don't always work out very well in the shell. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that for now. All right, so one of the first commands I'm going to talk about today is echo. Um, what does echo do? Well, let's just try. Let's just try e echo hello. It behaves like an echo. Imagine that. So it's um, basically returning whatever you see, um, whatever it sees after it. Like so in this case, uh, hello is the argument and um, that's what it's going to return. Um, now that's not very useful on its own, um, but we use it for other things. So now is a big now is a good time to start talking about redirections. Um, as we go, we're going to get into the diagram and everything like that. Um, but 
basically what echo is doing is it is um, writing things to our standard output if you remember us talking about like what is a terminal in 1975 it's a TV screen and a keyboard and that is our that's where our standard output is usually sent it's usually sent to the terminal where we can see it um, but we don't need to do that we can redirect it into a file for example so what does that look like well I'm gonna do the same thing as before and instead of sending that to the to the display sorry I am going to redirect that into a file the file I'm gonna give it a name I'll just call it friendly because you know whatever so you notice the second time I run this you don't see anything pop up on the display it just completes and it's done but when we take a look inside you're gonna see a file called friendly that file is not empty it's actually got six bytes okay six bytes huh that's interesting now the next command I can talk about is uh, called cat cat is short for concatenate but you don't have to worry about that so let me use cat and let me try to take a look at this file aha uh -huh. so what cat is going to do is open a file and send the contents to standard output which is our display our monitor so we can read it and once that's finished it exits out and it's fine so you can see that all that stuff that we did which basically was the word hello that is in the file now okay so let's try something else we'll do something else I'm just gonna do echo hello world and I'm gonna send that to friendly okay and this time I'm gonna run cat friendly again you can see that our hello has been replaced our hello has been replaced by the word the words hello world this time so that is something to keep in mind when we have one of these characters that is going to overwrite whatever was in the file okay so that can be dangerous if you're doing some things like for example trying to add to a configuration file um, sometimes you want to just use echo because it's pretty quick um, but this would be a bad thing because that would overwrite all the rest of your commands and stuff like that so what we're going to do I'm going to show you another one uh, this is append okay so what I'm going to do is add another character or sorry another line okay and I'm going to send that to yeah, works better if you spell it right so this should be appending to the file called friendly and you can see it works so it's just gonna put stuff at the end of that line and then it's going to basically lead and this also works um, this also works if we're going to create a new file for example friendly to okay okay so hopefully that makes sense okay so this leads us to uh, one of the other things that I want to talk about which is um, the use of cat so like I say cat basically opens a file and dumps all the contents onto your screen which is great if it's something like hello world um, but it doesn't work out so much if we have something that's bigger so let's take a look at what we've got I have this one file called acceptable use policy and you can see it's a 13 well about 14,000 bytes as opposed to you know friendly and friendly too so let's see what that looks like when we try to cat that okay this is actually a very long file and all of it sits here but like you can see this is maybe not the best thing for reading if we have something that's really really long uh, we can get to the point where we 
reached the end of the scroll and we can't see the top of anything and it just really doesn't work. So we have a couple of we have a couple of commands that will let us read things in a little bit more of a, a nice way. Um, one of them is more. And you can see as we go, we can start at the top and we can go. I'm pressing enter right now just to go line by line. You can also use space to go page by page. And then we get to the very end and it stops. And then there's also less. So that's more and less. Okay. And less is actually uh, less I find a lot nicer. So once again, I can go through and I can. Um, I can scroll through this. I can go GG to get to the top. I can go capital G to the, get to the end. And uh, I can also do searches. So I'm going to use slash. And let me look up for, uh, let's say, college. OK, so I can type in a, something to search for. And you can see that it has highlighted the pattern that I'm looking for. To check on the next ones, I can go N, N, N. That's basically it. So there's a couple colleges in here. I can press return to get out of it. Then I can press Q to basically quit from that. So that's a bit of a nicer way uh, to be reading documents. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is the MAN command. MAN stands for manual. Um, it is, should be one of the first places you're looking um, if you need help on something. I guess you could just Google it, but you know, sometimes you don't have a browser. You know, if you're running headless or something like that, you may not have a browser. Um, so anyway, let's say we have this command like date or something like that, right? You know what date's gonna do. Um, so one thing we can do is type in man and the name of whatever command that we've got. So let me write let me run this. It's going to bring up the manual for the command that you've got. Um, it tells you exactly what it's going to do. So date is going to print or set the system date and time. We're just going to use it to print the time. We're not going to mess around with that. Um, so the manual page works exactly the same way. Um, you can use the arrow keys to get around. You can use capital G to get to the very bottom. You can use GG to get to the very top. And you can also do searches. Um, so search, uh, for example, search my, I might want to do something like a dash I. And when I type this in and press enter, it's going to match that. So I can use this. Um, if you see a command and it's using an option you don't understand, you can refer to the man page and see exactly how it's going to work. So I can see the dash capital I is going to give me ISO 8601 date. Um, if you're in the programming stream or if you're a programmer, then date strings and date formatting is probably a huge thorn in your side. So that's a good thing to remember. So if I use this date dash I, I'm going to get the date in a different format. Okay. Another useful tool that we have is the diff tool. Diff is one of many tools that we can use to compare different text files. Um, so for example, we've got friendly and friendly too, right? So let me do cat friendly. We've got this one. Let's cat friendly too. We've got this. Okay, so diff, I'm going to give it two file names. It needs two file names. And what it's going to do is show me kind of the difference between the two. So you can see that friendly has two lines and friendly two has one line and they're not the same at all. Um, another way that I can use this is with the dash Y option. And when I do this, it's uh, slightly just a a nicer way of seeing output so I can see this I can basically see the two files side by side the last thing I want to talk about today is the find command uh, for this I've just logged in as my normal user and I've gone to a directory uh, let me show you exactly what's inside that directory now I've got a whole bunch of stuff 
and let's say that the one I'm really interested in is report.pdf. Yeah, I've been working on that all night and I don't remember exactly where I saved it, for example. Um, so find command is one of those commands that I personally have used on, on, on almost a daily basis, uh, especially when I was just beginning to learn how to use the shell and I was saving things to different places and I got easily confused. Um, so it is incredibly useful. The syntax for the find command. So we start with find. The next thing that we give it is um, where to start looking. So find is going to do kind of a recursive search, which basically means um, wherever we start looking, it's going to look there and it's going to look in all the subdirectories. And then after that, we start to give it um, different options and things like that. So if you, if you go and read more about it, you can also assign different actions when, for everything that you find, but we're not going to get that deep into it. We're just going to start off with uh, two things, basically. So I want to be searching in the current location. Uh, you should remember that the current location, the way that we indicate that is just with a one dot. Okay, so that means we're going to be looking in this directory, sample directory one, and all of its subdirectories and contents and everything like that. Next thing I'm going to do is I want to specify what kind of search we're going to be doing. I want to be searching for a name. I'm lucky and I know exactly what my file is called. I know that there's no uppercase letters, it's all lowercase, and it's just called report.pdf. Okay, so let's try that. Now you can see it's going to return exactly where this is found. So this is the current location, sample directory, Oxford programming slash report.pdf. And if you look in the tree, does that make sense? Here's sample directory, here's Oxford programming report.pdf. So, perfect. The use case that I've given for find is fairly limited at this point. Um, so I'm gonna change it a little bit. Um, this time I have removed report.pdf and now I have an uppercase report.pdf. And what you'll find, since Linux is case sensitive, if I do something like this, um, nothing comes up. We don't catch it. Um, so this is a case where ignoring case, um, you know, matching letters, no matter if they're small letters or uppercase letters, um, is a really good idea. So I'm going to run this command again, um, but instead of name, I'm going to use iname. Once I do this, aha, we're able to find report.pdf once again. So this seems like the most common kind of use case because I don't know about you, but um, it's quite common for me to forget what exactly I was capitalizing. Maybe I was doing camel case and then I forgot about it later on. Who knows? So here is how I recommend you use find. I recommend you use it with iName and what that does is it ignores case and does a name match. Now the next thing I'm gonna do you noticed every time I run this uh, search, it's quite quick, right? It's almost instant. Um, what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to broaden the search because perhaps I don't remember exactly where I saved this. Um, so this time I'm going to be searching in home. So this is my home. This would be Eric's home, basically. And I'm going to be searching in a lot I'm going to I've basically broaden the search quite a bit from what I had from before. So pay attention and see how long it takes for this one to happen. Okay, we're still going, we're still going, we're still going, we're still going. It's taking quite a long time, as you can see, um, because it has a lot more stuff to be searching through at this point. So if I was going to show you my home right now so you could see what we were searching through, we're searching through all this stuff. Okay, you can see even just to like, you know, display everything is quite, taking quite a bit of time. And we can see that we've gotten a permission denied kind of uh, 
uh, message here. So the next thing, one of the next things we're going to be doing is learning how to suppress some of these uh, messages uh, because they're really not useful. All I'm interested in is knowing exactly where to find this file. So we did find it eventually, but it took quite a bit of time. So finally, the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you um, another search. And this time, instead of searching just in my home directory, I am searching in the root directory. So that means everything everything gets searched. So this, you can expect, is going to take even longer than the last one. And you'll also notice that I got a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, a whole bunch of error messages having to do with permission denied. And actually, you notice uh, this one didn't seem to take quite as long as the last one. Um, that's probably because we have indexed a lot of, like, uh, matches and everything like that, you know, if you were really if you were really interested you could go and read the source code for the find command and see exactly why that's happened. But basically we already did all the heavy lifting. But we have another problem now. The problem is that we have all of these error messages. And this is going to get us back to something else I want to talk about which is um, another redirection that we can use. So let me push this down here. And one thing that I'm going to do is I am going to redirect number two to something like uh, error.log. So what is number two? You remember what this one does. This is going to take uh, the output from a command and it's going to redirect it into a file. Well, this is going to be redirecting error messages to a file. And uh, you'll see what I mean when I run this again. So this time, all we're getting is just the positive matches. We are not seeing any of those error messages from before. Where did those error messages go? They went into a file called error.log. And you can see it here. The file size for this thing is 80k. Okay. It's all still there, but we have redirected all of the error messages into another place. And actually, if you wanted to see what this looked like, we could do something like this. Um, how many lines is this? It's 1,500 lines. Um, by the way, I definitely recommend that you uh, run this command. Use the manual for this tool, WC, just to see exactly how it's working. Okay. So we have standard out and we have standard error. And there's um, one other little fun wrinkle, maybe not so fun, but it's another, another thing to keep in mind about um, using redirections. Um, when I ran this before, I was redirecting everything into a file called error.log. And error.log ended up being 80K. Maybe I don't want to keep that um, file because it's not really useful for me. I'm just getting a lot of like, you know, permission denied messages and I really don't care about that stuff. So what I can do to get rid of this, um, I don't want to save it into a file. I want to throw it out. So there's a location here called dev null. Dev is one of our um, uh, system directories. Um, if you take a look at dev, actually let me do that right now. And take a look. Let's go into dev and take a look at what's inside. We've got a bunch of weird stuff. Uh, we got a bunch of TTYs. So these are terminals, actually. Uh, we have standard error over here. We have standard in. These are being sent to another location. Um, we have a lot of interesting kind of stuff. And we have one place called null here. It's got a C, and so this is not an actual, this is not like a real file. This is kind of a, um, it's a file-like object, if you want to be specific about it. We've got a bunch of other stuff here. We've got something called mem. We've got something called disk. We've got something called CPU. And I believe if we go down, yeah, you can even see something called random here. 
Um, so these are a bunch of sort of like um, sort of interesting things that are represented as files in this place. But what null is is um, well, if you think about C, if you think about the C language, um, what is null? Null is nothing. Null isn't even a zero. Null is just nothingness. It's a black hole. So think about this command back up here. If we're redirecting all of the error messages into dev null, we're basically, we're not, we're throwing them out. We're throwing them into a black hole and we're not getting them back. So I can run this again and all of my error messages are getting ignored and that's great. Um, so I don't know, that's kind of interesting. By the way, interesting question. What happens when you try to read from this file called random? Uh, feel free to try it out on Matrix. Um, just remember that Control C is the way that you can cancel a command because what you're going to get is something like this. Okay? And I'm sure if you were taking a look at this in binary or as hex numbers, uh, you would see, hopefully, random numbers. So I'm going to hit Control C to get out of that, um, just because otherwise it'll keep going. So to sum up, um, I have this diagram of the three different uh, standard streams that we have in Linux. Standard out, which is going to the display by default, but you can redirect it if you want to. Standard error, which again is being piped to our display, but you can redirect it if you want to. We also have standard in, and we're going to talk about standard in um, a little bit further on in the course, but um, hopefully this gets you an idea about how this stuff all works. So if we had something like a cat, then we could be standard it, sending the standard out to our display. Okay. Um, so this is a bit of a summary over here. The redirections are things you're going to be using from now until the final exam and most likely in your professional work. Uh, here is a summary. So the three different standard uh, streams and some of the commands that we've talked about today. And it's always good to remember the shortcuts as we go. All right. Thanks for watching.